there's a lot of killing and stabbing involved in video games. From shooters to RPGs to hack and slashers, violence seems to be a reoccurring theme in the medium. And very few games actually put in the thought to punish or reward players for killing excessively. Then there are games that do put in the effort to punish you for committing virtual crimes, and here are the ones that do so most creatively. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain Kojima's swan song, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, is a game that actually uses its open world setting to great effect. Its setting of Afghanistan houses a complex web of interconnecting systems that create a highly dynamic gameplay loop requiring players to alter strategies on the fly. It's also filled with a ton of neat little details to signify the outcome of your killings. If you get sloppy and do a lot of killing in your mission, your demon points increase, which causes the horn on Venom Snake to grow, along with blood smears on his face. After a certain point, the horn will grow out completely and turn you into Demon Snake. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater this 2004 PS2 release sees players using the tools and tricks of deceit to face the various threats that lie in the jungle. It's a classic game, and one filled with excellent bosses and morality systems, the latter of which we'll be looking at today. There's a boss fight with sorrow, and players are presented with the spirits of the soldiers they've killed up until that point. It's an emotionally evocative sequence that serves to show the adverse effects that wars and conflicts have on humanity. Dishonored 1 and 2 Arcane's Dishonored series is famous for its morality systems that weigh player actions during the course of a playthrough to select the appropriate ending, but in Dishonored 1 and Dishonored 2, the game's settings are devastated by dangerous plague, and if players kill soldiers excessively, the plague will increase, leading to higher difficulties in subsequent levels. Of course, there are separate endings for high chaos and low chaos as well, and obtaining the better of the endings will require players to be extremely thoughtful before dispatching someone with a killing blow. Death Stranding Kojima Productions' Death Stranding may not be everyone's cup of tea, but you will often hear those who understood the game singing praise about it endlessly. Regardless of whether one liked the game or not, there's no denying that Kojima and the team filled the ruins of post-apocalyptic America with a ton of details and systems, which, of course, include morality. If Sam kills a lot of people during his deliveries, he'll have to face a lot more BTs, which would, of course, make stealth sections even more difficult, unless you use unique items to bypass the BTs entirely. Infamous 1 Sucker Punch's infamous games are famous for their karma morality systems, which also weigh the player choices against progression and ending. Depending on what choices players choose over the course of their playthrough, their good karma or evil karma increases respectively. This decides what powers players develop, and of course what ending they get at the game's conclusion. The karma system is a signature element of the infamous games and is present in every entry in this long dormant franchise. Payday 2 The Payday games see a group of players taking on some of the most dangerous heists together. There are a ton of strategies that players can employ to accomplish the task at hand, although the game discourages you from getting sloppy in a rather creative fashion. In addition to deducting money and points from your payout for the heist, if you kill a lot of civilians, you'll be charged with a penalty, and as such, you wouldn't be allowed to go on other missions until some time. Middle Earth Shadow of War Monolith's Middle-Earth Shadow of War houses a pretty neat nemesis system that randomly generates enemy orcs to create a unique open-world experience for every player. On top of assigning random names, titles, and backstories to orcs, the nemesis system has a ton of other variables that make engaging with it such an enjoyable experience. If you choose to kill an enemy orc instead of recruiting him to your army, it's possible that the specific orc will come back to life and face you again, now with his previous weakness nullified. That said, even if you do recruit the same orc, there's an equal chance he might backstab you in battle. To fully see all that the Nemesis system has to offer, you'll need to bump the difficulty up to hard. The Sinking City the HP Lovecraft-inspired The Sinking City sees players uncovering a mystery about Cthulhu in the sinking city of Oakmont. Much like developer Frogware's other works, players are tasked with carrying out investigations and exploring the open world. The game places a heavy emphasis on the sanity meter, which will drain out if you kill an unarmed civilian. It'll recharge after a while, sure, but if you kill too many in one go, your sanity meter will drain out completely and you'll eventually die out. Dark Souls 
From Software's Dark Souls series places little restrictions on what you can and can't do. And as such, it becomes absolutely necessary to think twice before making a move. If you accidentally kill any NPC, they're gone for good, and you'll get locked out of their services. A common mistake that first-timers of the series make is attacking any armed NPC in the Firelink Shrine, which is of course a death sentence by all means. And if you accidentally kill the blacksmith, say goodbye to crafting unique weapons. Undertale Undertale is a game that's weird but beautiful. Most RPGs task players with defeating humongous bosses with gargantuan health bars and damage outputs, but Undertale instead challenges players to defeat them using the power of love. The game deceives players by naming execution points as EXP, which is a measure of the pain players have inflicted on others, which increases if you take down bosses instead of forgiving them. Deus Ex Human Revolution Eidos Montreal's Deus Ex Human Revolution is a game about choices. It gives you a ton of tools and sets you free in a sandbox with an objective that you're free to carry out in any way that you deem fit. That said, players are expected to be careful of who they dispatch and how they dispatch. The game gives out less XP, 30 to be precise, instead of 50 XP awarded for a non-lethal takedown. To encourage players to go this stealth route more often, it might not be the most creative of solutions, but is certainly a good enough nudge without getting in the way of player freedom. Vampire Don't Nod's open world action RPG sees players assuming the role of a doctor turned vampire who needs to suck the blood out of the city's denizens in order to stay alive and become more powerful. Players have to be careful of whose blood they suck and how many they suck the blood out of. If you kill too many citizens, the city will be filled with monsters, making it difficult to progress in the game. Metro The Metro games are known for their dystopian settings and excellent survival horror gameplay, but few fans know about the game's hidden morality system. During specific points in the game, the player will either be rewarded or robbed of moral points depending on the decision they make at that point. When the player gets a moral point, the screen will go blue and the sound of water dripping can be heard. If the player loses that point, the screen goes black momentarily. It isn't precisely known as to what and why affects the moral points, although it is believed that generally avoiding conflict and killing helps in gaining points. Don't Starve Together Klee Entertainment's co-op survival adventure is one of the most stylish games of the genre. Players have a ton of opportunities to gain precious resources, either by hook or by crook, but the game will punish you if you get too greedy. If you kill too many innocent creatures, a demon by the name of Krampus will appear. Krampus will steal any items that players leave on the ground, as well as any items stored by the player at the base. He also moves very fast and deals a fair bit of damage per hit, and even if you manage to down him, there's only a puny 1% chance that he'll drop your belongings. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.